Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. Today in this video, we are going to see the implementation of hierarchical clustering. So the data set that we are going to use is an title data set. It's the uh, mall customer data set. We have used this data set quite a number of times in the past. So we are going to see how this data set can be used in order to identify the different clusters within, within, the, within the data. So what we are going to do is uh, first we need to import all the required packages as you see on my screen these are all the packages that we are going to use today uh, so it's it has numpy pandas and matplot library to make the plots and uh, k means not for today uh, we are going to definitely see about hierarchical clustering and then we are going to implement using the agglomerative clustering approach and these are all the packages that will be utilized today so what i will do is uh, before executing this let me clear the output so once I have cleared the output, what I will do is I will import all these packages that is required for today. If you have any issues, uh, if you find some of these packages are not installed, you can do an pip install and then restart it. Uh, otherwise, like, you can directly install it here as well, but I would prefer that you do an pip install like, uh, before starting the Jupyter because like, uh, there won't be any version issues and it will be much more cleaner. And then what we do is we read the data set. So all my data sets are in a folder called as data. So I read the mall customer data set. So this is how the data looks like. We have the customer ID, we have the gender, we have age, we have the annual income and their spending score between one to 100. So this is the data set. What we are going to do is we are going to use like mostly the annual income as well as the spending score in order to identify the different clusters in the data set. So first what we are going to do is we are going to drop other columns, the customer ID, gender and age, which is not going to be used today. So we are going to drop all those uh, features and, uh, and what we can do is we can check the subset so which is the data that we are going to use today. So if you see the subset, it has only the annual income as well as the spending store. So this is the data set that we are going to use in order to do the clustering. The next one is what we are going to do is we are going to use the subset and then we are going to plot the dendrogram and then let's see how it looks like. So it might take a quite a bit of time, like maybe a few seconds. Uh, this is a quite a small data set if you have a large data set maybe it could take much more time so this is the dendro dendrogram uh, for the data set that we have so what we can clearly see is uh, based on this data set it's uh, it's quite uh, it's quite intuitive that maybe we have to come up with a threshold around 300 and then maybe come up with three different clusters so what we can do is we can use we can plot a line and uh, we can we can maybe if we want to maybe show this to an business stakeholder or later to add uh, to an stakeholder who is not part of the actual like, development team in order to show them like how did we come up with the different different clusters so what we can do is we can use this chart and then we can tell them that uh, this is how the threshold has been defined and based on this threshold we can tell them that these are the three different clusters you can see in three different colors that will be identified from the data set. So then what we do is we go for the actual implementation. In case of agglomerative clustering approach, what we need to do is we need to pass on the number of clusters. So the dendrogram will tell us the ideal number of cluster for this particular data set. So based on the ideal number of cluster, uh, so unlike K-means algorithm, it's not very con confusing. Sometimes in K-means algorithm, what happens is the elbow might not be clear enough. So it might look like a pretty much like a straight line. Whereas in this approach, it is quite intuitive that right? we know that what is the ideal number of clusters. We can't just draw a line and separate it. So uh, we pass on the number of clusters and then we need to pass on how the distance needs to be measured between between two different clusters. So here, Euclidean distance is what we are going to use in order to identify the distance. And agglomerative clustering is the algorithm that we are going to use today. And what we are going to do is we pass on, we define the, the parameters to H underscore cluster, and then we use fit predict in order to identify the different clusters that is present in the data set. 
So let me execute this and what this will do is this will predict, this will identify the three different clusters that is present in the data set. It will, it will group the entire data set into three different groups that are selected the, uh, within those groups. The observations that we have will be quite similar to each other. And, uh, and as we see, let us zero, one and two are all the three different uh, clusters that has been identified. So one other advantage or like one other benefit of using hierarchical clustering as compared to k-means algorithm is, so as we, we spot in the last session, like k-means algorithm, uh, we need to upfront tell the ideal number of clusters, which might not be quite clear in some cases. The other disadvantage is it can sometimes go on an infinite loop because later it goes on iteration and only when the centroid for those identified clusters doesn't change on a subsequent iteration, then only we stop it. Otherwise, like we stop when the higher threshold is reached. So in some cases, what might happen is we might not reach an, uh, we might not reach an solution. It might be going on for a long, like for an, uh, for quite a bit of time. But that, that doesn't happen with hierarchical clustering. Why? Because like it can't, the number of iterations can't be more than more than the number of observations that we have. So it needs to definitely stop at a, at a point in time. And the other benefit is in case of K-means algorithm, the algorithm will try to come up with equal sized clusters. So let's say you have about 90 different observations, it will try to come up with 30 observations in each clusters. If you have a number of clusters as three, it will try to make sure that the number of clusters are, are, are of same size. Whereas in case of hierarchical clustering, that doesn't happen. So it depends upon the, the like how similar they are and uh, uh, and uh, doesn't do it that way, like as Jamie's algorithm. So you can definitely see like a lot of points are here. So here, uh, and uh, and then next what we are going to do is we are going to see like uh, how the different clusters are like uh, uh, in the actual data set. So let me execute this. And uh, as you see, these are all the different clusters that is present in the data set. And uh, that is the implementation of hierarchical clustering. So if you see, uh, the same exact same data set can be used on a k-means algorithm as well. So what we can do is in this case, uh, maybe in this data, if for this data set, the the elbow method might be good enough. Maybe we can come up with uh, like uh, uh, with uh, the clear view of the ideal number of clusters. But there will be definitely a large number of data set where the elbow method might not be very clear. We might not come up with a clear number of clusters that is required. So in those cases, it becomes a bit complex. And if your data set is all numerical, or if it has categorical values that are ordinal in nature, so then definitely hierarchical clustering is a good option for you to try. And this is a simple implementation of hierarchical clustering using the agglomerate clustering method. I hope you have learned something new today. If you have learned something new today, please give a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Apart from learning data science in 100 days, what I also do is I talk about various data science related topics, like how to build a resume for a data science career and, uh, and the various other topics that are related to data science and career in data science. So uh, subscribe to my channel so that you don't miss any of those videos. That's it for now. See you in the next session. Bye until then.